Hey everyone, here's a quick overview of Sizzle Pig. I was invited into their beta and had a quick play with it and I'm really impressed. I think it's got a lot of potential to help uh, designers and web developers alike. Um, one of the big bugbears when you're working on a, a web project can be getting the assets in the right formats, shape, size and everything else. Uh, and this has got some nice little features to help you with that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just show you really quickly. Um, I've only I've only done this once before. Uh, played with the project. I've just removed it, and we'll just start again, and, and show you how it works. I'm just going to set up a new project and, and go from there. First important thing to note is that you you link it with your Dropbox account, um, and the first thing to do is get all of your assets into Dropbox in a particular way, and it's really easy. I'll show you how. Um, it's as simple as once you're in your Dropbox, once you've connected it, uh, Sizzlepig will create a folder called Apps, and then a folder called Sizzlepig in here uh, create a folder for the project so let's just call this one test um, I like to keep everything organized so within test I'm also going to make a new folder called output um, then I'm going to copy the images that I want to actually use for this project into the main project folder so here are a couple of images and let's copy these across those are copied in and those are now syncing up with Sizzlepig so let's go into our output folder switch to icon view and then jump back into Sizzlepig so let's click create new project I've I already popped a name in there so we just give the project a name we'll choose the input folder for this one it's test choose folder we'll choose the output folder you can use the same one as the input um, but as I say I like to keep things nice and orderly so we'll choose the output folder there and click on create project so it's already grabbed the two photos it's grabbing those now into Sizzlepig next thing to do is click on blueprint up here at the top right this is where we set up the actual images that we want to use so the actual dimensions of the images so let's click on this one that they've put as an example we can drag and, and, uh, and set that if we want to by dragging or we can set a particular size here let's say that we wanted a 300 square one uh, we can choose the compression unsharp mask and image, image suffix if we want um, so one of the uh, pieces of software that I use always ends with an underscore in either M or L or XL or S etc for the for the different sizes so you can choose your suffix there as, as needed and choose the actual compression that you want and if you need to preview the uh, scale of preview you can do so there's one um, let's do this one uh, as a small one let's make this one uh, let's say 120 square and let's call that one underscore s and maybe for that one we just need low uh, comp compression quality and then add another image size you can drag these they can overlap but it's not going to make your workflow easy but you can literally drag these to a, to wherever you want um, resize visually or modify as you need to so 480 by 200 so let's just go with those three for now let's put a, a underscore I don't know long or whatever it might be and let's set that one to medium save the blueprint now we can either just click on process images and they'll all flood into Dropbox or we can go in and this is the great bit it's already taken my image there I am with Brian Johnson lead singer of ACDC a proud moment so I thought I'd share it with you all it's already dropped the photo into my preset sizes as you can see this one nah, it looks okay that one's alright this one it's chopping too much my head off all you need to do is click and drag you can resize you can click and drag and frame it just how you want easy as that so anyone including clients would be able to to do that perhaps on the small one we want to zoom right in on the faces and on this one we might want to just drag it down so that we can see the people in it once we're happy with that one if we want to we can jump onto the next one the difference you'll see here is you see this little orange icon at the top right, the little corner, that's showing that we've actually um, modified these images. These ones as you can see haven't been. Uh, this was me snowboarding a few years ago, I'm not sure I can do this anymore. But let's drag that one across a bit, perhaps resize like that. That one's looking pretty good, I'll just drag it down a little and perhaps this one will move that across, zoom in a bit like that.
So as you can see, they get a little tag once you've modified them, but you don't have to. So if you've got a folder with 100 images or what have you, you're not going to have to go through each one unless you particularly want to. You can revert them all if you need to, um, and you've got some options here for collapsing and expanding them all and just viewing the fine-tuned images if you want to. Now, click on Process Images and let's see what happens. So let's jump back to our folder. We can see there's nothing in the output folder right now. If I click on Process Images, it gives us a little status over here on the right telling us it's gone through them and if we jump into here there they all are so we've now got our images done exactly as we asked let's zoom in a little on these icons for you there we go so there's our three um, at the appropriate sizes this one I think I must set to low quality um, and it's, it's smaller than the preview anyway but what's great now is that might be enough for you and you can drop them straight into your web project you could sync up with this folder whatever you need to do but the really cool thing is if you then need to actually modify these at all then back in here you can simply perhaps we just want to show Brian's face we could do that we can modify them in any way that we want click on process images and it updates live via Dropbox onto your machine so of course if you had that syncing via FTP or whatever else it could go then straight into the website as well so I like that a lot um, and what the other cool thing is if for whatever reason say the client wants you to change um, the something on the actual image to change the colors or whatever else as long as you keep the image the same size you could drop a new image into the project folder I could replace the image here with one of the same size and it would do the exact same crops so if I was to take this image, open it up in Photoshop and for whatever reason we wanted to uh, change something drastic about it let's make it drastic so that we can see let's say we write it zombie night, there we go and save that now our image is saved there we can jump back into here and we can jump back to projects there, there may be a simpler way to do this I'm not 100% sure um, if we click on refresh and then jump back into this project we can now see that it's automatically grabbed all of that we click on process images and in here we'll see it update so I haven't had to reset anything it's automatically remembered the exact crops that I've done so that's how I found it useful so far. Um, I can see this being useful because I often have to take a client's website that might have a few hundred images on it and I often then have to take ones that are some are portraits, some are landscape and make them all square for example so they can appear on a category page or this kind of thing. I think this is really going to save me a lot of time um, and it's early days. You know I've got beta access so I'm going to give them some feedback. I just thought I'd make this video to, to give them some support and show you guys how it can work. If you go to sizzlepig.com uh, you get you get a fair idea because you can drag things around and have a play but I thought a video might actually show you how it can be used uh, in, a, in an actual sort of workflow process uh, and how you could use it so I hope that's been helpful and um, yeah see you guys on Twitter my uh, username is Jack Bremer J-A-C-K-B-R-E-M for mother E-R uh, give me some feedback I hope this video has been helpful and catch you soon